Oh, okay, I missed it because I, I hit it when she, when she started talking. <coughs> you want five minutes or? Five minutes. Okay. Um, I'm Jennifer Lee. I'm the The right to swing my fist ends where the other man's nose begins. This is by Oliver Wendell Holmes. I'm sure all of you have probably heard this quote before. Well, since I've been working at Mississippi Tobacco Data at the Research Center across the street from MSU, um, we have adopted our own little motto, and this is, your right to smoke ends at the tip of my nose, which makes complete sense because it's not about the fact that we want to, like, take away people's right to smoke because you don't want to take away people's right to drink if they want to drink, but you don't want people to drink and drive. Just like people that are going to smoke, you just don't want to affect other people. So it's about the harm of the behavior. And the government tries to protect us against it because of the group A carcinogens. We all know the, all the health concerns about it and that we can have lung cancer and heart disease and all that. And so the biggest goal here is to protect us against that. In a social climate survey, more than 8 in 10 Mississippi adults support a smoke-free air in Mississippi. Every year, 550 Mississippians die from secondhand smoke. Separating smokers in restaurants does not eliminate exposure to smoke, even with the good ventilation because of the rest, of, because of the residue of third-hand smoke. And then it's also because of secondhand smoke because what they don't tell you is that the ventilation, while they do have it, there's a company called ASHRAE that Dr. McMillan told me about. And this company actually makes them sign a contract saying that this does not fully protect against secondhand smoke. There's no way to fully ventilate it out and that's because of thirdhand smoke. When I talked to him about it, he gave me this analogy, which I thought was so funny. He said, it's like thinking about peeing in a pool. If you're going to pee in the pool and you tell somebody you can pee in this section and it's okay, well, you know that it's going to disperse everywhere. I thought that was so clever. Um, have y'all ever heard of Smoke Free Air Mississippi? You've probably seen the on the Jumbotron or just some of the videos that have actually come across YouTube or um, some of them actually been on TV where they have little kids pronouncing all the different carcinogens that are in tobacco smoke and advertising for it. Well, this program is to try to protect Mississippians and um, <coughs> provide us with a healthier environment. It's not to take away people's rights, just to protect people when they go into public places. It's not taking away the right to smoke in your home or anything like that. You can still smoke in your home, you can still, um, you know, smoke in private places. Um, in the survey, a lot of people did agree that Mississippi should be smoke free. However, the ones that were concerned about passing a law for such said that it was because of government regulation. They're afraid that the government's going to have too much control, but the government's right is to protect us. And we do this with everything, like everything's regulated. There's the, the biggest thing is the drinking and driving thing that helps me to see a clear picture of it because we don't care if people drink, we just care, you know, about the vividness of a car crash. And the difference between that and cigarette smoke is cigarette smoke is going to affect you more in the long run. It's not, it doesn't have the immediate effect of, oh, I just lost my best friend in a car wreck. However, it does kill. It's just as deadly. Whenever um, the smoke-free laws were passed for restaurants in Mississippi and Starkville, 27.7% was a decrease in heart attacks, whereas other surrounding towns that didn't have this law passed was 14.8%. So that's a pretty good difference. Not only that, we did save $288,270 just from passing that. There are four criteria whenever a law is going to be passed, and this is, does this behavior harm other people? Does this cost other people money? And does the intervention cost money? Well, the intervention for cigarette smoking, passing the laws in restaurants, hasn't affected any of the restaurant's businesses. 
Um, they actually done a survey on that, and there was no difference before and after. And is it unreasonable restriction? Some people would say that it is because they think it violates their right, but when you're walking to class even and people are smoking in front of you and it blows back into your face, it's kind of violating that person's right, the people that don't smoke. So Mississippi's doing pretty good though. We're 32nd compared to all the other states and state rankings for um, raising the cigarette tax. Although we only have a 68 cent tax, whereas the average for the U.S. is a dollar and 45 cents. And whenever they raise taxes on cigarettes, smoking actually smoking rates actually do go down. As far as Mississippi goes, 80 percent of Mississippians support the smoke-free law, and 80 percent do not smoke. 81% believe that restaurants should be smoke-free, and 57% support smoke-free air in restaurants. The government regulates... Together we can make a state better, brighter, healthier place to live, so let's give the people what they want, smoke-free air. You can support this website by going to smokefreeairmississippi.com and sign the petition for it. And I also have some magnets and business cards for y'all so you can email me if you have any questions. <laughs> Thank you.